You need to do two things tonight. One, grab your Bible. And second thing is, let's get in it, okay? I need you to go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And then I need for you to go to the book of Isaiah. Put something in both those places. Uh, we will be in Isaiah a lot tonight. And uh, also in Revelation uh, chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Uh, it's hard to believe. Uh, we're about to put the caboose on this. And uh, you've heard the phrase, um, it's not over till the lady sings. All right? I didn't want to say fat. Till the healthy lady sings. She may not be singing, but folks, she's warming up, okay? And so we're about to end the series, and uh, I've really enjoyed this with you. I've enjoyed this study with you, and uh, I am looking forward to the next series uh, that we'll get into. But for tonight, uh, I'm actually going to cover 18 and 19 tonight. No, you think I won't do it, but I am, and because uh, I want to go to uh, the 20th C next week. But we're studying the Bible from beginning to to end. And um, do any of you want to take a stab at how long this series has been? Anybody, any of you want to do that? I'm not going to tell you. You have to go online and look, all right? And uh, maybe that'll get some of you to go online and follow up with some of these messages, all right? Revelation chapter 20, and uh, it, also the book of Isaiah. And But in your handout, we have covered several things. And uh, on your handout, I'm going to kind of review and go over a few things uh, before we jump right in. And uh, I'll give this back to you. Um, first thing in your handout is when Christ returns to the earth, Satan will be chained in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. We uh, looked at that and uh, last week. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal uh, uh, upon him, that he should deceive the nations uh, no more, and till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit more about that in detail, and uh, I know what you're thinking, man. If he's already bound and if he is casting that bottomless pit, why not just leave him there? Uh, well, uh, there's a purpose behind what God is doing and why he's only bound for a thousand years. And I'll share that with you tonight, why that is the case. But in your handout, I want you to get this. Uh, this thousand year period is referred to as the millennium. Everybody say millennium. Yeah, uh, you can get uh, tongue-tied on that one right there. It's kind of like saying the word cinnamon. And, uh, cinnamon and, uh, but that thousand years is known as the millennium. And every thousand years we have a new millennium. And we talked about that. But notice in your handout this statement as well. Uh, the term thousand years is mentioned six times in Revelation 21 through 8. It's very significant because there is those who uh, teach and uh, uh, that it's not a literal kingdom that God will set up or Christ will set up. It's not a visible. It's just this uh, uh, spiritual kingdom um, and uh, that it's not really going to happen. Uh, but they couldn't be more wrong because uh, the Bible mentions this time over and over and over again. And uh, God's word is exactly uh, what it means to say, and it's exactly what it is meant to be, and that is a thousand years, and it's so descriptive, and uh, so from the context, we understand uh, that this is a literal thousand years, but what happens during this thousand years? Well, we talked a little bit about it last time, but we're going to finish this part up. In your handout, Christ will set up his kingdom on this earth for a thousand years. Now, during this thousand years, there are some things that he does. I want to go in detail what he's doing during this thousand years. What happens? What's going on? Who lives? Who dies? 
uh, what, what happens and uh, can people live through the tribulation? Uh, uh, how come people's heads get cut off and yet they live again? And uh, I'm going to answer all that tonight. Remember last week? I know you do. Uh, people's heads got chopped off and yet the Bible says they live again. Well, how does that happen? I mean, if your head gets cut off, guess what? You're dead. Well, how do they live again? Well, we're going to talk about that. And uh, what happens during this thousand years of Christ setting up His kingdom? Uh, notice on the screen or in your handout this chart. Uh, this chart explains that and helps you to understand that this has been prophesied, this has been talked about, this kingdom has been talked about since the world began, since time began. Uh, this has been prophetic. This is nothing new. This prophetic program here is nothing new. But what was hidden, God, is the body of Christ, which we are, this uh, 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 grace period, this parentheses, if you will, was hidden in God. God kept it a secret, as well as the rapture was hidden in God. So uh, what was supposed to happen on God's prophetic timetable was the kingdom was prophesied and uh, the kingdom was declared at hand uh, during Jesus' earthly ministry with the twelve. Then at the early part of Acts, we realized that uh, Israel rejected their king. Uh, uh, it was offered, and they're like, no, nope, we don't want this Messiah. Although we cried for a Messiah, we want a Messiah, but this isn't him. This isn't who we want. And God put the prophetic timetable on pause. He hit the pause button and ushered in grace. And that was the beautiful work of the cross of Jesus Christ. And after the rapture, guess what happens? The prophetic timetable kicks right back in, Cliff. And the seven years of tribulation, uh, which is the kingdom at hand, Christ comes to uh, this earth. His feet touch the earth. Where does he land, folks? Where does he go? Yes, he does. Jerusalem, his feet touch Mount Zion. And uh, he comes, and at that moment, thousand years uh, in your handout on the chart or up on the screen, uh, the kingdom is established and the twelve are sitting uh, on the twelve thrones. And they are ruling and reigning. And uh, the Bible says in Micah 4.2, which is on uh, the screen, And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion. Notice that. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So you learned last week, and many of you already knew the answer, the center of his kingdom will be in Jerusalem. Folks, can I tell you, this is no news. This, is, this isn't breaking news. This has been known about for thousands and thousands of years. And that's why there's such a territorial War going on over what Israel will have. They know it. They think it belongs to them. But God, according to His Word, has established who it belongs to. It belongs to the nation of Israel. And He's going to do just that. He's going to give them their land. And we read the verses that are in there from Zechariah 8, 3 and all that. And I'm not going to uh, go over that tonight. We also learned that uh, in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 33, uh, this is where the angel, uh, uh, through the conception of the Lord, came and told Mary, listen, uh, this Jesus that's coming, he will reign forever and ever, and he will reign, his reign will be without end. It is prophetic, folks. It's been told over and over and over. Well, what is going to happen during Christ's earthly kingdom? Well, we told you last week, I think it's number three on your second page. Israel will be regathered and given the entire land area of Palestine, never to be removed again, and they will live under a new covenant. Now, you have Revelation 20 in your handout, right? You don't put a bookmarker there. Don't leave there because we're going to be back to this in just a moment. But right now, you should be in Isaiah. I need you to go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. 
And you might as well just put something in Isaiah and just park it there as well because we're going to be going back and forth, back and forth. Isaiah chapter 11, uh, verses 10 and 12. And by the way, uh, uh, there are a lot of references in your handout. I do not have time to look up every one of these references, but we will hit the highlights, okay? We'll hit the high points. Isaiah chapter 11, and I want you to look at verse 10 through 12. Isaiah 11, 10 through 12. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for a sign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand Again, the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and Cush and from Elam. And then he goes on and names all these. And then verse 12, and he shall set up an ensign. Do you notice that? Look at that. For the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. What's he doing? He's putting his people in their land. He's not going to miss one of them. He's gathering them together. And uh, because people have asked the question, well, what if, you know, uh, because uh, if if you talk to Jews today, um, uh, they, they think they have to live right there in the city. They, they believe. Uh, and so sometimes people ask the question, well, what if a Jew lives in America? What if a Jew lives over here? Listen, it doesn't matter where they live. It doesn't matter. God's going to restore that kingdom, and he's going to gather his people uh, from the four corners. of It doesn't matter. He's going to put them right where they belong. Now, if they claim the Lord as their God. Now, if they don't know Jesus, guess what? They won't be there. They won't be there. Do you know that a Jew has to come through the cross work of Jesus Christ just like anyone else? All right? And so it's important for you to understand that. But what happens during this time? Well, I, I want you to... you got a bookmark in Isaiah. you got a bookmarker in Revelation. Would you go all the way to Hebrews now? And uh, you don't have to put a bookmarker there, but I do want you to look at Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Look at verse 7. There's just, you know, there's just way too many cross references and good verses, obviously, that just absolutely substantiate all this. And I hope that you'll take the time uh, to go through these in your personal devotion and time with the Lord. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 through 13. Look at it, 8, Hebrews 8, verse 7 through 13. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should, should no place have been sought for the second. That makes sense. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days uh, come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not my covenant. They broke that covenant. I regard them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And, I, and they shall teach, not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. I'm going to talk about that. How does Man, that's incredible. From the least to the greatest. Folks, stop right there. Does everyone know the Lord today? He says right here, for all shall know me. I'll talk about that. What's going to happen? In verse 12, for I will be merciful to the unrighteous, to their unrighteousness, excuse me, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. It gets incredible what happens during Christ's earthly kingdom. And I want to share those with you right now. What happens? One, uh, the 12 apostles will be on the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's in your handout. And, uh, and I'd like for you to go with me to Matthew. I just don't have time. I wish I had time, but I don't have time. All right? So uh, he's going to, the 12 tribes will be on the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right? The 12 apostles, excuse me. I, I, I misspoke that. The 12 apostles will be on the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, 
This will be a fulfillment, by the way, of Old Testament prophecies. That's just a fulfillment. Most of you know that. But, but what's next about the kingdom being set up on this earth? Uh, what, what happens uh, during this time? Well, in your handout, this is the first blank for tonight. Here it is. All nations will worship the King, Jesus Christ. All nations. Would you go back to Isaiah chapter 2? Hope you kept a bookmark. You're going to wish you did. Isaiah 2, look at verses um, uh, 2 and 3. Isaiah 2, verses 2 and 3. All right? Biblical aerobics tonight. All right? Get in that Bible. All right? Make sure you uh, keep a place in Revelation 20 and Isaiah. Important. Look at verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go up and say... Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Guess what they're doing? Man, they're going right together to worship King Jesus. Man, that's where they're going. That's one thing that's going to happen. But can I give you the next thing in your handout? This ought to get you excited. War will be abolished. There'll be no more war, folks. No more war. Are you in Isaiah chapter 2? Look at verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You know what they're going to do? They're going to take all their swords and all their uh, 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 defensive uh, weapons, and they're going to go to be farmers. That's what they're doing. Why? No need of them anymore. Hey, if we're not going to use this, let's dig up some ground and plant some uh, uh, corn and, and uh, potatoes. And uh, that's what they're going to do. Well, we might as well not just waste this stuff. we got all this stuff, boys. Well, build a big fire. Let's melt it down. Let's get it done. Why? No more war. We don't live here, though. Folks, there's a lot of war going on. We're not in that day yet. But can you imagine there'll be peace on earth at last? What a blessing. May I help you with something? Uh, I think we ought to be specific in our prayers, and I think we ought to grow in our prayers. And I think you hear me say it a lot to help you uh, grow in your prayers. You know that it is an unfruitful and a waste of time for you to pray for there to be peace peace on earth because there will not be do you, do you know that that is u- useless for you to pray that Lord I just pray that it will be peace over there in Israel <laughs> not going to happen until Jesus makes it happen until he parts that sky and comes down in a white horse and uh, comes let me tell you something until that happens there will be no peace until he establishes his literal, visible, and physical kingdom, guess what? It's not going to happen. You can pray for it, but whether you pray for it or not, guess what? It's still going to happen. Why? God prophesied in his book that's going to happen. Guess what? It's going to happen. There are certain things you don't need to pray for. This will be one of them. God will do it. Jesus Christ is going to take care of it. Are you with me? No more war. Amen. Let me give you the next thing in your hand now. Righteousness and justice will prevail. Man, this is, this is an incredible time. Hey, no war. Israel will get their land. All that fighting and stuff. Done. No more war. And justice and righteousness will prevail. I need you to go to the book of Jeremiah. 
Keep your bookmark in Isaiah. Don't leave that. Don't leave that. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 23. All these cross-references should be in your handout, by the way. But Jeremiah 23, would you look at verse 5 and 6? 23, 5 and 6. Ready? Behold, the days come. Jeremiah 23, verse 5 and 6. I hear a little bit of paper. I'm going to wait on you. Here we go. Jeremiah 23, verse 5 and 6. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign, capital K, by the way. We know who that is. That's King Jesus. Amen shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Look at verse 6. In his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Can you imagine that? Justice and righteousness will, be, will prevail. Folks, guess what? We don't live in a time where justice and righteous prevails. Listen, all those injustices that are done today and that people that get away with those things, people that get away with murder and people that get away with rebelliousness and, and uh, you've heard the old phrase, well, they got away with murder. Guess what? Not here they won't. It will not happen. There will be individuals who will rebel outwardly against Christ's rule during these thousand years uh, because they're going to be fleshly uh, bodies. They're going to be people living in the flesh. In other words, uh, they're going to be living in their flesh. They're going to actually make it through the tribulation. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But understand, there will be people who don't know Christ. They are not saved at this time. But... God says immediately judgment will be passed down. There won't be anybody sitting uh, and appealing their case and a murderer uh, spending year after year after year spending all the taxpayers' money just trying to get off and trying to get off and trying to appeal. Let me tell you something. When it happens, immediately judgment will happen. How do you know that? Well, one, we just read about that. But look at Isaiah now. Go back to Isaiah. I told you. I told you. Isaiah 11. There is so much there. Isaiah 11. Look at verse 3. I wish I had time to go over all these verses. I just don't. Isaiah 11 verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity for the meek of this earth, of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Hey, ho, oh, way, that's something. Hey, I saw you steal that. Whoop! Sorry, there's no appealing, there's no but, there's no uh, bothering, there's no, uh, I try to explain, nope, done. He's going to take care of it. Can you imagine what this time's going to be? No war. The curse has been lifted during this time, folks. Where is Satan right now during this time? Not now, today, but during this time period. Where is Satan He's in the bottomless pit. Things will be good. Can you imagine this? Everything that's wrong will be made right. Immediately, Miss Boots. Someone lies to you. Or hopefully we'll be raptured out. Right, amen? Uh, we will be gone. All right? Because if the rapture come, comes, I'm gone. Amen? And, um, but... Uh, Think about it during this time. Someone uh, uh, lies or, or does an injustice, immediately it's taken care of. Immediately. Look at uh, Isaiah 29. We'll look at this. Isaiah 29. Look at verse 20 and 21. Isaiah 20, 29, excuse me. Isaiah 29, verse 20 and 
21. Isaiah 29. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Listen, there is no discussion. God is. And through His Son, Jesus Christ, every time something's done, immediately He's going to take, it, take care of it. Yep, it's pretty exciting to me, but in your handout, let me give you another thing that's going to happen during uh, this thousand-year reign. Christ is ruling and reigning. Earthly kingdom is set up. Satan is bound. In your handout, the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Full of the knowledge of the Lord. Go to Isaiah 11 and look at verse 9. Folks, this is, this is remarkable to me. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Look at verse 9, Isaiah 11. They shall not hurt nor destroy in any or in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Folks, you want to know why it's so important for us to send missionaries out, plant churches? You want to know why what we do is so important? So the earth can be full of His knowledge. It hasn't happened yet. It'll happen here, though. It'll ha- be happening here. Say, what does that mean? What this means is that the curse has been lifted and everyone will know during this time about the Lord. This will make some of you happy right here for some of you animal lovers in your handout. Nature will be tamed. Write that in. Nature will be tamed. Are you in Isaiah? <laughs> look at verse chapter 11. Look at verse 6 and 8. 6 through 8. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones uh, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Can you imagine this? Little Johnny, your your little special one walking right out there and rubbing the lion. Hey. Yeah, kitty, kitty. Can you imagine uh, your little girl going out there and just petting a snake? It's going to happen. How about this? Your little kid going out there to the edge of the water and feeding the alligator little hot dog. And it going. And it puts its hand right in there and feeds it. Oh, you're a good alligator. Can you imagine that? That's incredible. We can't, our minds can't fathom that. But all of these things are going to happen during this earthly rule and reign of Christ's kingdom being set up. It's amazing. Now, go back to Revelation chapter 20. Oh, it's it's so good. It's just so amazing. There's so much stuff here. Look at Revelation chapter 20. Look at verse 6, if you would. Revelation chapter 20. Look at verse 6 through 8. Actually, do 4 through 6. That would be, that would be right within the context here. Revelation 20, 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which beheaded. Look at this. For the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Head cut off. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived, head gone, living. And reigned with Christ, how long? Hmm, verse 5. But the rest of the dead, if there's the rest of the dead, then that means there must have been dead before them. 
It says the rest of the dead live not again to the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Rapture on the such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Here in your handout, write this in. There will be a resurrection before the thousand year kingdom. Folks, look up here. There will be a resurrection before Christ's earthly kingdom. This is not the rapture. Say, what are you saying? There are two resurrections in your Bible. The rapture that you and I will go through is the first phase. Our resurrection is seven years earlier. And this one is the second part of that resurrection. I mean, this you get your head cut off, but you live. How does that happen? There's going to be another resurrection. It's this incredible. And in your handout, there's a lot of stuff. And, and uh, all, all these things happen during uh, the millennial reign of Christ. So let me kind of sum it up for you. And then I have five minutes to cover 19. We can do it. Here are four groups. Ready? Believers were killed during the tribulation and are resurrected, and they will be ruling and reigning during this time. Second group of people are those who lived through the tribulation time period, okay, and were led into the kingdom in flesh and blood bodies. They lived through all of this, about one third of the population. Folks, there will be a population explosion during this time. Uh, there is, uh, people are going to be spared of the judgments. They're going to they're gonna hide, as we've read about in study, they're going to hide in the mountains. God is going to protect them. What happens to those people? Uh, they are going to be spared all that stuff during this time. And, and, and they will actually live through it. There's a third group of people, which we've studied, and that is those who will be born, born during the millennium. Like I said, there will be a great uh, multitude of births. And then uh, the fourth group will be believers that form the body of Christ that were raptured out seven years early. Uh, That will be usins, okay, if you're saved. So we will be reigning over uh, the uh, angelic coast and the heavenlies. I mean, uh, yes, people ask this, well, well, we're, are we going to be able to, uh, to go? Yeah, we're going to have access to, to, to go from heaven to earth. Uh, but we will be ruling and reigning uh, in heaven. Uh, you know, as the Bible tells us that uh, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings and that we are seated in the heavenlies, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So that brings us right to the next part where we go from coronation to condemnation. And in your handout, just keep writing At the end of Christ's thousand-year kingdom, Satan will be loosed. This is the next thing, and so it's just easy to go right into this. You're in Revelation chapter 20. Look at verse 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. And when the thousand years are expired... Man, there's a lot that's happened during that thousand years, folks. But it says when it's expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. Look at this, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together, look at that, to battle. Man, he's always trying to stir, man, don't you hate him? And he's always trying to stir up stuff, and here you go. Does he not remember what happened at the last battle? You know, the Antichrist and the false prophet Man, they got cast in the lake of fire, and everyone else got wiped out. He gets bound, and what does he do as soon as he gets out? I'm going to get my little grief together. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a memory problem because he doesn't remember real well. And, and look at it, verse 8. He gathers them together to battle, and the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And yeah, he was bound, but please understand... 
that many have entered the kingdom with physical unredeemed bodies. So here's the deal. Thousand year reign of Christ has been phenomenal. There has been, his kingdom has been set up, I should say. It's not just a thousand year reign. Okay, he reigns for eternity, uh, end without end. I, I, I mean, it, it doesn't ever end. But during this thousand year time period, it, I just went over all that. It's incredible what happens. Israel gets their land. Their, uh, every injustice is made right. There'll be no war. Uh, there's so much peace. Um, uh, um, uh, there's just so much that happens here. All the nations worship uh, Christ. And, and uh, there's just so much peace. But these people that are living through this time that have gone and entered into the kingdom with, with literal, physical, unredeemed bodies, they, they aren't saved they will have children. They'll repopulate the earth. And they will still, listen to me, possess a sin nature. Now think about this. The curse has been lifted. Children are born during this time period. And they live for several hundred years again. Thousand years. And people are living for hundreds of years again. You tell me, how many babies can you have? A lot. Think about this for a moment. You know how hard it is for us to believe that Noah, we believe it because the Bible tells us and we live by faith. You know how hard it is to really understand that Noah lived for 900 years? Do you know that during this time, it'll be hard for children to understand that people only live during our time period for 7 to 80 I mean, the average lifespan today is, what, 75 years? Can you imagine how things are going to be swapped now? And, and, and they're going to say, hey, listen, uh, listen, little Johnny, uh, uh, your great, 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 infinity uh, 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 only lived uh, 80 years. What? Man, that's nothing. I know. And, I mean, your grandpa's, he's 800 years old. I mean, they're not going to. They're not, it's going to be hard to be understood. Children will have to be during this time because uh, there will have been such peace and the curse will have been lifted. Do you realize that children will have to be taught that there once was a devil who deceived people on the earth? Can you imagine that? They won't have a clue. They'll have to be taught that there once was wickedness, there once was murder, there once was rape, etc. on the earth. Righteousness and, and, and perfection has been reigning on the earth for a thousand years. They won't have a clue. That's remarkable. And during this millennial reign of Christ on the earth, people often ask, well, if he was loose, if he was bound, then why was Satan loosed? And I'll tell you why, and it's been the same reason why since eternity since man was created from the garden of eden adam and eve since that time forward until all the way through this time that we're talking about the reason and people ask this why was satan loosed it's because during this time men and women will still have to make a decision discerning Jesus Christ. It will force individuals to make a decision. By the way, that's the theme of this Bible. That's the theme of your Bible, free will. Men and, wi- men and women have always had free choice, volition, have had to choose. You had to choose to come to church tonight. You could have sat at home. You could have done whatever you wanted to do, but you made a choice. People here will have to make a choice. Say, well, why did God let Satan loose? It's because you choose whom this day you will serve. Nobody gets a free pass to heaven. Nobody gets a free pass to heaven without their sins being remitted, without their sins being repented of. They must choose Christ. And so... They must choose if they will receive or reject Christ. It's always been that way, and it will continue to be that way. 
And yes, although outward rebellion won't be re- allowed, because remember, Jesus is going to speak and take care of that inwardly. Get this. Inwardly, they must decide if they will choose Christ. Reminds me of a little story where Johnny kept getting up, getting down, getting up, and his mommy told him to sit down and stay in his seat, and he kept getting up, getting down, getting up, getting down. And she said, Johnny, that's it. I want you to sit in there and turn to that corner. And she put him in timeout. And she went back to him and said, I hope you understand my point now. You must obey me. And she said, Did you hear me? He said, yes. She says, well, do you have anything to say? And he said, I may be sitting down on the outside, but on the inside I'm standing up. (laughs) Right? Have you ever been that way with Jesus? I know what your word says, but I'm not doing it. You know, they're going to do it here during this time period. Outwardly, the world may be perfect. And can you imagine that? Even though things are perfect, people still choose to reject Jesus. No matter how you dress it up on the outside, folks, you know it's always been a matter of the heart with Jesus. You can perform till you pass out to the church. You can do it all. You can scrub the toilet. You can drive the bus. You can do it all. You can do everything that the church needs to be done as far as on the local level. But it doesn't really matter if your heart is wicked and you don't love Jesus. It's all for naught. Man looketh on the outward, but God looketh on the inward. You know what he's doing right here? He's looking on the inward. I'm reminded that mankind has always been, always hated to be told what to do. Mankind has always been, has always hated to be told that they're wrong. They've always hated for their sins to be pointed out and to be told to change. They will hate it here too. In your handout, sadly, many people will follow Satan in his rebelliousness against Christ but they will be immediately destroyed. Go ahead and write this in. But I have some good news. Would you look at verse 10? And the devil that deceived them da, 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 was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Yep, that's where you're going. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. So in your handout, Satan will be cast in the lake of fire for eternity. Boy, he think he got over. He think he got one over on Jesus. But boy, was he wrong. But people must remember that you must choose whom you will serve. But whom you serve, you will follow. Hey, to be in glory forever and ever or unto condemnation forever and ever. In your handout, this is a judgment of all unsaved people throughout the ages. Because the great white throne judgment will occur here in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. That's what's going to happen. The unsaved, their judgment will be based upon the word of God. You can read about that in John 12, 48 is a good cross reference. Death will give up its bodies and hell will give up its souls and spirits to stand and be judged for one final time. The unsaved will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death, by the way. While most of people at this judgment are unsaved, this is probably the time where believers during the millennium, will also give an account for their lives and decisions. So uh, we know that uh, I will not, if you're saved, I know I won't because I'm saved, uh, we won't give an account for our sins because they've been forgiven. And I thank God for that. But I will stand before God uh, for my works after I'm saved. I'll give an account for what I did with Jesus. Um. 
Sadly, uh, many Christians will stand before Jesus with nothing to offer. Oh, well, I was faithful to that church. That's awesome. But, but did you fulfill my commandments? Did you, did you tell anybody about me? Did you, were you in my word? Did you, did you love my people? Did you, did you pray? Did you, uh, did you give? Did you serve? Well, I was a member of that, that church. That's, that, that's, that's not what he's after. So are you saying membership's not go, good? I, I'm saying in light of eternity, uh, membership is, is fine, but in light of eternity, it's what did you do with Jesus? Did you live unto Jesus? And by the way, uh, 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 people come and go from church membership. On average, every church loses 10% of membership every year. Every year, 10% of the membership cuts out. Not necessarily because of their problem or whatever. They decide they're out, want to do something else, go to another church. And uh, average churches lose 10% of their membership every year. It's not about the membership. It's about what did you do with Jesus? And in your handout, the present earth will be destroyed by fire at this time. It'll be destroyed by fire. Say, so what happens next? What, what happens uh, after this? What what happens uh, uh, after uh, the, the coronation, after, uh, after the condemnation now, and, and Satan is cast into the lake of fire and tormented day and night forever and ever, and false prophets are gone, and, and, and the Antichrist are gone, and all the unsaved are judged, and everything is made right, and uh, uh, the earth has been destroyed. What happens after that? Next week we'll tell you, okay? Got to come back next week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Uh, thank you for tonight.